So I thought I would, don't get seasick, I thought I would try something different and I did already draw this out in pencil but I'm going to show you what I do after I get the pencil down which is go back through and kind of do these pop art ones with a little bit of sharpie. I'm going to do the fine tip and the super fine tip or extra fine tip I think they're called um, just to get the lines in there and really make this thing, you know, pop off the canvas because that's what we're aiming for. So this is a Roadrunner, greater Roadrunner I guess is what the internet told me when I was looking for pictures for inspiration. Uh, because I had a friend who wanted it and it's on a little old canvas board and we're just going to see where we go from here. Also ignore some of the funny sounds, it's probably my puppy. Just rolling around and being a monkey and trying to play with stuff as loudly as possible. I'm just following the lines I drew with pencil. I'm concentrating on the spots that are extra dark with the big sharpie. It looks like this one's kind of dying on me. I might have to see if I have another one. Mostly what's important is to be directional and follow the lines. Just the direction that they go or the direction that they should go. Because if I do that, follow the direction the lines should go, put the dark where dark should be, and don't put anything where there shouldn't be dark, it's going to turn into what I want it to be. This isn't super realistic, since we're doing sort of the pop art style, but realistic enough that hopefully someone who sees this will be like, oh, it's a Roadrunner, without being like, oh, that's obviously, you know, ugh, photorealism, that's boring, why wouldn't you just take a picture? Well, yeah, good point. So, I'm not trying to be photorealistic, I'm trying to do something more unique. I don't know if I said this before, but I'm kind of trying to do a roadrunner, like looking back over the shoulder. So we'll see how this works. They're really very pretty real life roadrunners, not just the cartoon one. A lot of dark and light. Big pretty eyes and beaks, even though they're not very big. Expressive little creatures, it looks seems. You've got these fuzzy little feather fluffs here and there. I'm trying to get those in there. They have them on their chinny chin chin, which is especially funny, but I think I'm going to use my fine, super fine tip, extra fine tip, whatever they call these. Ultra fine point, excuse me, ultra fine point to do that.
you can to do some of these little feathers up in their head here. Swoopy fluffies being the very technical term. And I will go back in with uh, a little bit of acrylic paint to finish this guy off and add some more highlights and shadows. But for now, I'm just blocking in the shapes and lines and shadows and stuff as best I can with the markers. Look at those cute little hairs. Again, I keep calling them hairs. They're little fine feathers. I'm almost certain, but they're so cute. They're just very interesting birds. These roadrunners, eh? Once again, ignore the uh, weird sounds in the background. It is just my dogs flipping out about, you know, everything the dogs flip out about. There we go. Fresher. Fresher permanent marker here. Seems like the feathers on these guys are a lot darker on the one side, and as they go towards the ends, they get lighter. So that's all I'm trying to do right now. Let's just kind of make the feathers darker on the one side and go towards a lighter base. So I've got them kind of outlined in that pop art style, but I'm still just touches of realism here and there. Still gotta, I still want you to know what it is. And this is the same technique I used when I was doing the uh, rams, which I think I made a short little video about. I did some bears and some wolves in that this style also. It's been really enjoyable for me because I can just sketch them out quickly and then focus on texture, which for me is like one of the most fun parts of the art that I make is the texture and I have a lot of time to do the texture like I want in this style because I'm focusing less on making it picture perfect and more on just making it sort of flow into the shape that I want. Again, now my dog is trying to climb out a window that's behind a fish tank. That's the banging you're hearing now. It's a zoo here. Probably why I like to draw a lot of animals and paint animals is because I kind of live in a zoo.
A lot of goldfish. A couple of dogs, cat, gecko, snake. A lot of things going on here. I'm certainly no expert on road runners, but uh, this is fairly decent road runner looking esque little dude I got going here. Let's bring this shoulder out a little more. Give a little more twist. Really, really puppy. I think that's it for the marker step, and I think we have a pretty decent drawing. I'm going to turn this. What do we think? It's starting to look like a roadrunner, so my next step is going to be a little bit of black and white acrylic to just sort of enhance the shapes I have here and add some more depth to it, and then I'm going to do a very bright background. Um, I'm going to do a set of three Roadrunners, so it's going to be a primary color of some sort. Just haven't picked out what color yet, so that'll be the next step. Okay, so the other thing about the style that I'm doing, you know, every time I think I'm done, it's never done. I uh, just went back in and added a little more, a little bit more of the fine tip marker. I think that's got more a little more depth and realism to it even than right but uh so the problem is the real problem is look at that the side of my hand because I drag it over the canvas a lot of black nonsense I've got all over me that I now have to deal with and it's permanent marker so yeah it doesn't come off that easily but I guess that's why we like it too <laughs> because it stays on the uh, canvas pretty well, especially when I seal it with like Mod Podger and acrylic spray or something, so I guess, I guess that's the trade-off for making art this way. Alright, so we have now migrated because before I was just working on this thing uh, sitting in my living room, and now we are upstairs in my actual studio, or as you can see from the painting sitting behind the painting on the floor. And I'm just going to work on doing the background and then I will do the kind of highlights and shadows with a little bit more acrylic over the top of the Sharpie. It's a really cool effect to use um, a little bit of watered down acrylic paint over the Sharpie and marker because Sharpie has a tendency to bleed through. And so when the Sharpie comes popping out of the paint a little bit it's it just it lends a nice depth to it the background however this is going to be less exciting i'm just going to paint it with um i have a phthalo silene blue one of those big bob ross words 
it's a little too blue, but all the blues I have are a little like green based. And I think that's the issue. So I'm gonna warm it up with a little bit of a purple hue. What do I have here? Prism Violet. I'm gonna, Prism Violet, it's a heavy body acrylic by Liquitex. I'm gonna warm that blue up with it. And that's how I'm gonna do the background. So that's what we're doing right with this part. I'll also predominantly be using some sort of angle brush. Come on camera, focus. Basically, the brush is on an angle so I can get short, straighter lines. I'm trying when I paint backgrounds always to leave my edges a little bit feathered. For this one I'm going directionally up and down as much as possible because that seems to be looking nice for the ones of these that I've done. Um, and kind of feathering those edges like that prevents me from leaving sort of really harsh, chunky like, oh she ran out of paint on her brush spots, if that makes sense. Oh, and this is just me painting the side of the canvas also because even though this is a canvas board and it's not very deep it kind of just looks better to have the edges painted as well and do i care that i'm painting my uh easel no easel's already covered in paint so nothing new to get a little more paint on it just one less thing for me to have to worry about I don't know, I don't think the camera's catching it, but I'm also dipping my brush into the, uh, my water, my rinsing water, before I get paint every time, because it allows me to use the acrylic a little bit more like watercolor, meaning I just get more depth and variation in the color itself because its opacity is lowered, and it also just flows across the canvas better, so I can play with the depth of the color a little bit more because I can always go back and add more but it is much harder to take the color off once it's already on there so I like to work with a lot of water in my acrylic paints they do make as I mentioned in other videos gel mediums and things like that that will serve the same purpose but if you've ever worked with watercolor at all you can figure out how to kind of emulate watercolor technique with acrylic and it, it is just kind of a cool effect with the really vivid paints here so that's what I'm doing and like I said just trying not to leave any unwanted harsh lines horizontally vertically I do want them because it makes it like have this nice directional texture it's only horizontally that I'm worried about leaving marks I don't want and that's just a style choice you know, if you're trying to do something pop art in your style, maybe you want horizontal lines. I just, I don't because I want it to just go whoosh. That's just me. And because I'm using a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue, and I didn't mix it all together properly, quote unquote, I just have them sitting next to each other on the canvas. Every time I go to put a little more paint for the background on my brush, I'm getting a slightly different mixture of the blue and the purple, which means every brush stroke is a little bit different, which just gives me a little more, uh, a little more texture and a little more variety in this background, which I like. If you don't want that from your art, then, uh, well, don't do that. Mix all your stuff right away. But I like the variety as long as we're staying in the blue realm because that's part of our primary color sort of style choice we're making in this set of three here. So we're gonna do blue, yellow, and red. And that little hint of purple is not to add, you know, purple sections, but just change the tone of the predominantly blue canvas. into something 
just a little more vivid and interesting to look at. See, look, now I'm leaving those horizontal lines I don't like. Gotta be careful, gotta keep the brush moving. And the more water you have in your paint, the harder that is. Because the edge, you know, it's just like with watercolor and you, if your edge doesn't stay wet, the wet edge or whatever, you know, artsy fartsy people want to call it. I say as if I'm not artsy fartsy. Um, that's how you get those marks that you may not want. And then I only want marks to go up and down just for the style of this. But since I have this angle brush, it makes it pretty easy to sort of blend and feather my brush strokes until they are a little bit more like I want them to be. There we go, look at that, that's pretty cool. You'll see I got a lot of purple and very dark blue on that one. Looks a little different, yeah, but I don't mind it. That's the point of not completely mixing them is that it does give me some variety to work with. I am just painting over some of those little fine hairs too because they'll pop through. Since I have this acrylic paint watered down a little bit, if it were full bodied, they still might show through because this isn't a super opaque paint, but if I was using um, a very opaque paint, they wouldn't pop through and that would be a problem. And I'd have to figure out how to deal with that. But thankfully, one of the benefits of watering this down and the paint itself being a little bit less opaque is that the black that I want to show up I can just paint over with it and it will still show up. And I'm not fully filling in here because Roadrunners have some little light golden and white areas in their feathers. And so I'm not, I'm leaving just some of that for highlight in there, in the feathers. And I don't know exactly how I want this background to look. I'm just, I know I want it to be blue. I know I want vertical lines here and there to give it some te texture. Beyond that, I haven't planned. So however this turns out, it's gonna be a surprise to me as well as whoever's watching this. Cause basically I'm just gonna do it until I like the way it looks. I may have to wait for it to dry a little before I can do a whole lot more because I'm going to start pulling paint off the canvas at a certain point if I'm not careful. Ooh, look at that, that was really blue, greenish blue. But we like variety, so that's nice. I like the way that looks. You can see that one's a little more purple, a warmer blue. Ooh, lovely. Lovely depth we're getting here. And notice I'm going all the way from top to bottom where I can because that makes it a lot easier to get coverage without leaving those horizontal lines I don't want there. See, I left one right there. But if I go quick enough, I get that all smoothed away. And you can see I've got a little bit of it living here. That's just the nature of the beast. I might go back in and do something about that. I might just leave it. Kind of depends on how the rest of this background turns out and whether I want that much texture or not. But I'm liking it so far. Hmm. And see how I'm going back over what I've already done too. Because once again, it's easier to add than subtract. Oh yeah, look at that, that nice rich blue. Could bring a little more in here. Could 
because again I get to paint this background however I want it to look as long as it's in my you know the aesthetic of the design which is to do these bright bright colors just primarily red primarily yellow primarily blue and this isn't primary blue it's a little off from that but it's blue enough that it'll work oh, and then the whole canvas the other nice thing about acrylic is that it dries really quickly so compared to oil paints it's a dream you have to be careful with blending but it's easier to layer you won't blend very well because it dries too quickly but you can layer and layer and layer oh, see i should have waited for that to dry a little more because i just pulled paint off the canvas so you see that light spot but too late now i'm gonna have to fix it there we go super blue blue like I had a little bit of the blue run into his beak but that'll be okay because I'm gonna go back in like I said before with a little bit of black and white acrylic paint to add depth and kind of just polish off the line work I did with a permanent marker and I think it'll be okay Ooh, that's very dark to get a lot of good highlight on the this road runner here so he doesn't just blend into the background because if the background's super dark and he is super dark too then we won't see him and I can't go lighter but I can go darker oh yeah that's starting to look really I think in that background colors. Nice stuff. Not too bright, not too blended, not too scratchy. What do you think? It's really purple right there. I don't know how I feel about that. Turn that to get a better view. Don't get seasick. I don't know. Kind of like that. Maybe add a little more. It's really light. Don't get seasick. I think that'll do for that part for the background for now so we're down to basically the finishing touch parts right now um, of the pop art style roadrunner that I'm doing here 
uh, silver permanent marker. You can't tell what brand that is, can you? Um, I have taken in to just kind of add to these feathers here. Let me grab the camera if you don't get seasick and bring it a little closer. Um, you can see I use that in the feathers here just to make them pop because they got lost in the black a little bit. And then down along the edge here it got really dark so I used some silver. But you can see there's all this white popping through still. And I'm going to go back now with some white acrylic paint and enhance the highlighted bright parts and then I'm going to be done. So a couple of black sharpies, a little bit of silver sharpie, some white acrylic paint, some blue and purple acrylic paint, and uh, the only thing I didn't film of my process was the maybe 10 minutes it took me to draw the pencil part out and the maybe five minutes of silver sharpie I did while the other part of the studio was saving and loading. So um, it's a pretty quick project for me to do in this style. Of course, that's not taking into account the couple of hours of research I did just looking at images of Roadrunners. That's really, you know, for me personally, the art that I do, the thing that takes the time is the research. And I think that's something that maybe people, when they're buying art, don't think about, is that it, uh, before the artist even starts, you have to think about the planning I'm doing with my tools and my paint and my canvas where I'm going to paint, how I'm going to paint it, how big it needs to be, how I'm going to transport it. And then I need to do research and figure out, okay, what's the best light? How do they look at, in this light and at, from this angle? And, you know, I looked at at least hundreds of pictures of Roadrunners before I decided what I was going to do. And I had to figure out three distinct ways to present the personality because this is only one of the trio. And, you know, just keep that in mind next time you're working with an artist that even even if we can do this part quickly or relatively quickly it takes a really long time to get to this point so anyway now that i've rambled and i'll get off my soapbox and just finish up here with some highlights and some of the feathers and in the beak and we'll be done and uh once again i'm just using an angle brush it's a teeny eeny weeny angle brush this time because i just want a little bit of paint to dip doop doop into the little feathers kind of circular feathers in his face here. Again, just to add some depth and some texture. That's all I'm doing. And uh, that's, this is how I make these. I'm not saying this is how everybody should make art. I'm just saying this is how I make this art. So if you like this style, you know, give it a try if you've got some Sharpies and a little bit of acrylic paint lying around. It's, you know, nothing too, too difficult if you take the time to sit and think about it and plan it. I believe that you can do it. I think I'm at the advantage in the drawing part where I can draw it out faster because I've gotten a lot of practice at you know, quickly drawing things out. So then by the time I get to the part where I'm adding the Sharpie and the paint, you know, a, a lot of the hard work is already done, which is why it looks like this is going so f kind of fast. But um, that doesn't mean you have to do it fast. It's not an indicator of how good or bad you are or your art is. It's just an indicator of how much practice a person has had. I think that's true of art in general, the only thing that separates quote good artists from quote bad artists is the amount of time and effort and practice they've put into it. I think everyone can be an artist if they just take the time to practice. Look at, do we like the way that looks? I think that's looking pretty, those little little rounded feathers are starting to pop. Got some chinny chin chin. His feathers are a little less round and a little more angular down here. I don't want to get it too bright because this is under the chin so it would be in shadow. But just enough. 
the some direction of the feathers. That's what I'm all about at the moment, is just showing the direction. Oh yeah, that's pretty. We like that. And I don't know if you can see on that camera, but um, the white acrylic paint is, uh, since I didn't allow the Sharpie time to entirely dry, it's blending with it just a little and creating kind of this greenish bluish cast, which you know, if you didn't want that when you were making art, you would just need to wait for the Sharpie to dry all the way. Since I didn't, it's giving me this interesting blended sort of extra depth or extra shadow. And I really like that. If you don't like it, then don't do it this way. You do it your way. Because that's what art's all about. You make it pretty the way you want to make it pretty, or make it ugly the way you want to make it ugly. Just do what your instincts tell you to do. Your instincts and whoever your inspiration is. If you have an artist that you really like and you like their style, try to see if you can figure out how they do it. A lot of my art is somewhat inspired by, you know, you'd, you'd never maybe know it looking at this, but I'm a big Bob Ross fan. And I'm pretty sure this looks nothing like a Bob Ross painting, but his techniques for blending or not blending are something that stick with me and have helped me. And I'm definitely influenced by, there's um, a children's book illustrator named Stephen Gamble. He's probably most famous for the original illustrations, not the re-release, because that's Brett Hellquist, but the original illustrations for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And he works in ink and watercolor, I believe, but it's very line heavy, and he uses, in the Scary Stories, a limited color palette that I really like. And um, I think that's something that's come into my artwork just because I admire his work. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. If you admire somebody, figure out why and see if you can use their techniques to make something that you love of your own. Why wouldn't you do that? It's no different than being inspired by some sort of, you know, like a star athlete. And uh, I think it was Kobe Bryant that said he, you know, was looking at the moves on the court of some of the other, you know, basketball masters that he looked up to and he was borrowing their moves. Perhaps barring is the wrong word because his, you know, if he wasn't built exactly like them, he couldn't do it the same way. I think Austin Kleon talked about that in his book, uh, Steal Like an Artist, that you have to make it your own. So nothing that I'm doing here looks exactly like the stuff created by the artists that I look up to. Or Andy Warhol would be another one because obviously he's the first person people think of when they think of sort of pop art. And like the heavy use of the primary colors that I'm doing is definitely a sort of pop art thing, but this doesn't look like an Andy Warhol painting. It's just kind of inspired by some of what he did. And, uh, well, how'd I do that? I somehow got back up on my soapbox, didn't I? What do we, th what do we think? I think just that little bit of, a little extra oomph. I think we got it. I think we got it. Let's zoom in. What do we think? I think that looks really pretty and it looks like a roadrunner. And the reason my voice sounds funny is I put my paintbrush in my mouth to pick up the camera. <laughs> so I'm going to set it back down and I'm going to see if my acrylic paint is dry enough for me to sign this. Because, here, paintbrush out of my mouth. Always sign your art. If you are out there and you think, even if you think you're not a quote real artist, sign your art. You deserve to sign it. Maybe you don't think of yourself as an artist and you think, oh, that's silly. I don't need to sign it or I don't need to work on a signature. Other people might want to know because you never know who your art's going to have an impact on and who it's going to touch and they want to know. They want to know who you are and they want to see your name and that's important. So it's not for you. It's for the people who who care. And you might not think they're out there, but they probably are. Uh, so I'm, as I'm looking at this that we've zoomed in, I think 
maybe that beak needs a little more white because you can see it looks a little bit darker than everything else and I want it to have depth and shadow but the top of the beak looks a little blah let's do that let's add some white and then maybe we'll be done Don't, don't be seasick. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I just have the one camera, so... Well, I suppose I have my onboard on my laptop, but that would just be filming the side of my head right now. <laughs> I am using two different whites. This stuff's awesome. Uh, Liquitex. Come on, zoom properly, camera. Titanium white, heavy body. Because it's supremely opaque, so if I have to paint over something a little bit to change its lines, it works really nicely. This is also Liquitex Basics, um, titanium white. It's just a little bit more transparent, and it costs I have a lot less, and I don't have a ton of money, and it's still pretty nice paint, so I'm using both of those in combination on this, just so you know. But I'm going to try and use some of the more opaque, the heavy body white, because this just blended into itself, and I want that beak to really look... Like the light's catching it. That's better. That's much better. Now I'm going to take and wipe some paint off my brush. Because that got really bright. And try and... Um, this is called scumbling. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's using a very dry brush. With very little paint to kind of blend your edges and soften things up. So if there's any painting technique any one painting technique you should learn, it's scumbling because it will just make your life so much easier. Oh yeah, that looks much better. It's got some more pop to it. I'm actually going to do that in these feathers up here now that I've seen this and I like the way that looks. And do that same little bit of the heavier body to see if it make it look like we're just catching the light a little bit. I'm very lightly touching the canvas, and I can always go back, I probably will go back in with um, the black sharpie if I get too light, just to finish up and enhance my lines. So I might have got a little light right there, but well, maybe not. What do we think? It makes me pretty happy. See, this is the thing too. If you don't like it, you can always paint over it. People get so twisted up and it has to be perfect. It has to be exactly the way I want. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, so nobody's art is perfect. And if you're not happy with how something looks, just keep working at it until, you know, you like the way it looks. And if you like the way it looks, even if it's not perfect, it's done. Good enough is good enough. I don't know if that's a saying that somebody actually invented or if it's just something my husband and I say, but good enough is good enough sometimes. Or good enough for you. If you're the artist, the art needs to be good enough for you. And if it's good enough for you, it's good enough. How do I keep getting up on this soapbox? Remember how I said you think you're done and then you're not? <laughs> I don't feel bad about that though because I know I'm in good company. Apparently Leonardo da Vinci, who painted the Mona Lisa and obviously is famous for a lot of other things also, worked on the Mona Lisa for something like 20 years because he never thought he was done with it. It was just never good enough. And that's why when, you know, forensic scientists are looking at it, there's just layers and layers and layers and layers of paint to the Mona Lisa because he just was never satisfied with it. And that's okay too. He, he definitely didn't subscribe to the good enough is good enough because the Mona Lisa was never good enough for him. But we don't have to be Da Vinci unless we want to be. Go, by all means, go for it if that's, your, if that's your jam. But for me, I just want to make something pretty that I think will make my client happy. And he asked for Roadrunners and he wanted pop art. And I like this and I hope he'll like it too. Yeah, that's better. Here, don't get seasick, I'm moving again. I think that's better. Got really bright. See, now I've gone the other way. Might add a little more black back into the feathers on top of his head, but 
yeah this is, this is pretty i'm happy with how this is going at least i think it's pretty you don't have to no expectation that you like my art as much as i do because well that would be silly expectation because not everybody likes every piece of art but if you do sweet and thank you and if you don't well Maybe I'll paint something you like next time, or maybe you'll find a different artist that you like. Whatever, however that works out. I like this white. I just don't want to have quite so much. Since it's just such a hard balance between not enough, too much, and just right. Like the Goldilocks zone of art. <laughs> How do we get to the Goldilocks zone? Well, if you're like me, you paint over and draw over something over and over again until it's the way you like it. That's better. Let's sharpen up this line too. I think I'm going to use a black marker to sign this. So I don't want to put my name on here, but I don't want my name to steal focus. I think I'm going to sign right down here. This seems to be dry. I'm going to pick it up to do that. There. So it kind of blends in. Moving the camera again. There. This has only taken me a couple of hours this afternoon. And a couple of hours of research. And I'm, I think that this is really nice. So if you watch this whole video of me rambling and soapboxing and painting a roadrunner and well, drawing slash painting a roadrunner and painting the background. I appreciate that you watched it, and I hope that you'll watch some more of my videos in the future and click subscribe if you like this. Um, this is the first really true tutorial I think I've tried to do, and I'm definitely going to try to do more of these in the future. So, anyway, thanks again for watching, and I hope you're having a nice day.